well, I was inspired to write this uh, message. After doing an oil change, am I echoing it? Um, after doing an oil change on my daughter's car yesterday, and then I was reminded about myself neglecting to go and see the GP. About three months ago, our daughter's car was booked in for her regular service. And I can't remember the real reason, but she was working that day and she never got to drop her car off or have somebody to drop it off for her. So months went by and I was repeatedly saying to our daughter, Hannah, to get her car booked in for a service. Well, three months later, and my daughter is overseas holidaying at this current time, while I was doing the oil change on her car yesterday. And as I've mentioned in the past, at the beginning of each year, I go to the local GP for my regular health check. And there was one part of my body that I overlooked. Because at the time, my foot, it, wasn't, it was fine, it wasn't sore, and I had no pain. About six to eight months ago, I went out into my shed barefooted, and I had a metal filing pierce into my skin. I felt it, but I ignored it, and it was only when I applied or pressed on that part of my foot would I feel the full brunt of this metal filing in my foot? Well, now I'm paying for it. I'm paying for it as I'm constantly in pain because of my ignorance that when it first went in, I should have done something about it then. Now, when I walk around barefooted, I believe this metal filing has reached my bone because of the discomfort that I'm experiencing. I had Narelle, my wife, dig into my foot, but she couldn't see anything. But when she pressed on it, I surely knew it was there. Well, and some of us may be feeling pain in some part of our body today, either because of neglect, like my daughter, whose car was overdue for its service, and like us, we need a bit of maintenance, we need some maintenance from time to time, like physio, chiro, dentist, doctor, and etc., to keep us in good shape and in good health. Or as in my situation, stubbornness and ignorance, having something so tiny as this metal filing that went into my foot, that it has caused a lot of discomfort and irritation. That in the end, I think I'm going to need treatment or surgery. And I want to share two examples of people who are close to us in the past two months who are still in hospital today. The first is when Narelle was up here just two weeks ago sharing her testimony. And she said, if this person was not operated on that particular day, he wouldn't be with us today. But my wife and I, we saw over a year ago that he wasn't good and we didn't tell him that he needed to change his lifestyle or cut back on the social life. He's always been social and he likes the drop or two and now around my age there has been a drastic change in his life. The next is my wife's uncle and for the past Three and a half months, he has been in hospital. And just in the last few weeks, he said to Narelle and her sister that it was time for him to be moved into aged care. 
we wished he would have said that over two years ago or a lot earlier as Narelle and his sister between them both helped their uncle to make him comfortable in his own home. The ambulance was getting called more frequently because this last episode where he has now been in, uh, before his last episode, where he's now been in hospital for over three months. And it's understandable when you've lived in your home for a long time, totally independent to be to part with your home and now to have people who have to care for him 24-7. This is where the Bible quote, cast all your cares on him for he cares for you. And even in our more senior years, everyone, he still cares for you the same way when you came into this world. So in both cases, there could have been an avoidance of a prolonged stay in hospital. And so I'm asking you today, when did you last examine yourself or when did you get yourself tested? And I want us to go into this deeper from 2 Corinthians. So if you have your Bible with you, 2 Corinthians, we're looking at chapter 13, verses 5 and 6. And I just want us to go deeper into this question. When did we last examine or test ourselves? So I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Hallelujah. And this indeed you are disqualified. But I trust that you will know that you are not disqualified. Now, some of you may be thinking to yourself, I'm doing all right. I'm here in church. I'm giving. I'm tithing. I'm helping. I'm supporting. I'm carrying out all my duties and responsibilities. And I've ticked all the boxes for the day. Some of you may be attending church assured that God is happy with your attendance record. Well, that is well and good. But we should be examining ourselves regularly to see if we're in close relationship with God. Are we setting aside, are we setting aside regular prayer time with God? Are we reading our Bibles daily? Are we obeying the first two and greatest commandments spoken by Jesus? I had a gentleman this week who professes to know God and our Lord Jesus Christ say to me that it was all right to steal. The example that he gave me was that if your family was starving and you had done everything to try put food on the table and there was no food and no help coming your way, then it was all right to steal because it, is, because it is something that your family needs. So I had to go on to explain to him that it's not good to steal. No, God will meet and supply all of your needs. You just need to trust in him. You see, I could see this guy's heart as he would do anything for you, and that was for me. And this was his words that he said to me Friday this week. He said, before I started this job, he prayed, God, I want a closer relationship with you, but I don't want to go to church. I stopped him as he drove past on a forklift and I offered him my chips which I hadn't finished. He said he was starving just before lunch. And I pulled him over and gave him my chips and my pasty. And he said he now realized that God was using me to bring him closer to God. 
Are we wanting to be in a closer relationship with God? As this guy was striving to be, are we examining ourselves to see if we are in the faith? There are four short questions that I'd like to ask us this morning to see if we really need to examine ourselves further or if we are in good spiritual health, how we can maintain and live in this divine health. So why am I saying this? It's because I believe that this little metal filing that is stuck in my foot and is now deep and is going to require surgery may relate to someone here or those who are watching online that there may be poss a possibility be, that be something so small in our lives that has been left for a while or unattended and now we're either suffering for it or we're reaping the consequences of overlooking an issue that should have been dealt with from the beginning. So it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. And there may be some little issues that need to be attended to, as Proverbs 4.23 states, Eat your heart with all diligence, but out of it flows the issues of life. You see, when one part of your body suffers, the whole body suffers, doesn't it? You see, with this little metal filing in my foot, I've had to nurse this foot, which has caused a hip problem, which has made my back go out of line. I've had to nurse because of the pain. Now my whole body's suffering. I don't know whether my shoulder is included in that, but I just feel my shoulder as well. Your whole body suffers because of something so small. So first question I want to ask, has anyone lied in the past week or in the last couple of months or this year? Have you only told a truth? Was a half truth is a lie. Have you exaggerated and not told the story to the best of your knowledge? I was one of them. Second question Have you removed something that doesn't belong to you in the past month or this year? And it's on your person right now, or it's sitting at home or in your car. In other words, have you stolen something? Third thing I want to ask, either this week or last week, have we looked at the opposite sex with lust in our heart for that person? See, the Bible quotes, but I say to you that whoever looks at a woman lustfully or with lust for her has already committed adultery in his heart. It's Matthew 5, 28. Have we looked at things on our phone that we should not be looking at if we were sitting in the church here? Are our, see, our eyes are the windows to our soul. And if our eyes are good, our bodies will be filled with light. Do we love the world and the things in the world? Brothers and sisters, it is difficult, but God is always there to make a way of escape for us and lead us not to be tempted beyond what we can bear. And it says he leads triumphantly and victoriously. The last question I'd like to ask, have we let some words slip out of our mouths of late or used the Lord's name in vain? You know, in the heat of the moment, the words that just come out or come to the surface that you didn't realize that were there. But they came out. You see, our tongue has the power of life or death. And those who love it are going to eat its fruit. 
You see, our words can be kind or cutting. And we know that from the book of James, that no man has been able to tame the tongue. So, I've just asked four questions to give you an internal examination of yourself. Now, if you didn't batter an eyelid, or your conscience didn't see you, then I would say you are in pretty good spiritual health. Hallelujah for that. Well, I'd like us to look at two, pe two people from the Bible. One who thought he was in good health and right relationship with God, and the other who knew he wasn't in a good spiritual health. And I would like us to note the simple action of the one who knew he wasn't right with God. His words, his heart, and his position. So turn with me to Luke chapter 18, and we're lit, uh, reading from verses 9 to 14. So Luke chapter 18 from verses 9 to 14. Also, he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to the temple and prayed, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. First, both these men were going to the temple to pray. Now, one trusted in himself, and that all things were right in his own eyes. So, that made him righteous, and he didn't think much of others. Well, little did he know, but he was soon going to be humble. See, we're, not, we're told not to trust in ourselves, but to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Also, our righteous acts are like filthy rags. It is his righteousness that makes us right standing with God. That's Jesus. As he also tells us that we're to love our neighbors as ourselves. So this Pharisee has gone and prayed. He's gone to pray with himself. God, I thank you that I'm not this, I'm not that, and I'm not like this tax collector, this sinner. But I want to remind you, God, what I do each week in verse 12. Twice a week, yeah, I fast. And not only that, I tithe all that I possess. So God, you see me wasting away like a shadow each week, and then I fast a little gaunt. Plus, Lord, I give all I possess. I'm going to pat myself on the back. Well, the tax collector is standing afar off, not even going to raise his eyes to heaven because he is separated from God because of sin. As he beats his chest to demonstrate his sorrow. And in a few short words, that tax collector gets straight to the point. Standing there with his head down, beating his chest, he said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. You see, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us 
from all unrighteousness. This tax collector, this sinner, went back home more justified than the other. Church, it's just the short confession you can make, and you'll make it right with God. You see, Jesus' disciples were asked by the Pharisee, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? And he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. That's in Matthew chapter 9. You see, this tax collector was merciful. God have mercy on me, a sinner. You're the only one that can get me off the hook, Lord. You're the only one that can blot out, wipe out, and away all my sin. Thank you for forgiving me, a sinner. This relationship was restored where our Heavenly Father was able to embrace his angelic the Son. Another story. In Luke chapter 17, turn, to me, turn with me to verses 12 and 17. And there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off, as did that tax collector, who stood afar off. And collectively together, they lifted their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy. Have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And so it was, as they went, they were cleansed. In those days, they were isolated from their own people because they were considered unclean until the priests looked at them to see if they were well enough to go back into the community. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he returned. And with a loud voice, he says he glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to them, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. This brings me back to our scripture verse, 2 Corinthians 13, 5. 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you unless you are disqualified? If the test was marked from 1 to 10, I think I'd be at the lower end. I honestly do. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory. Do you not know yourselves? Jesus Christ is in you. He is in you. He sees what you're seeing. He knows what you're thinking. He hears what you're hearing and saying. And what you have said. He knows what you're doing because he is familiar with all our ways. Because Jesus is in you. What a sure safeguard to have Jesus in us and on our side when we face the world and its challenges that we face each day. God is fighting for us. He's on our side and we are overcomers 
through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, we may have some setbacks or disability, but God is always there to help us through. Greater is he that is in you. It is time for you to rise up. It's time for you to raise up, rise up and shake off the things that want to latch on to you. As the viper that was driven out by the heat of the fire lashed on to Paul's hand. That's Acts 28 verse 5. It says that Paul, he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. Brothers and sisters, we need to shake off things. We need to shake them off and put them in the fire where they belong and not allow them to latch on to you that want to bind you and hold you captive. Jesus wants you to know that he is in you and he's given you the power and the authority over all the powers of the enemy. And through Jesus, you can be made whole and healed. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, we need to shake off these things. You know, in Hebrews it says we're to throw off, aren't we? Throw off everything that hinders and the things that so easily entangle. So don't let the little things spoil or taint your light. It's the little foxes that spoil, isn't it? Deal with the issues we face in life. Deal with them because Jesus is in you and he will fight for you you know he's on our side and so he wants to do things for us pastor keith and i heard a powerful testimony just recently where this gentleman shared how he and his partner were going to church And they wanted to become better people, but they were still addicted to meth. They became better people because instead of doing five days a week on meth, they were only doing two days now a week on meth. And one day, one of their friends came over and they dropped a packet of substance of meth in this little bag. And one of their little children that was crawling on the ground got a hold of this little packet and swallowed that substance. They didn't know what was wrong with him. They rushed him to hospital. And they were there at home. And they had a knock on the door. And it was the police. They were there to arrest them because of what they had found in this little baby. They had to fight for their three children for the next year. You see, they had to give urine urine samples every second day to make sure they weren't on meth. He said it was the best thing that ever happened to them. They had been clean from meth. For over a year. Through that circumstance, they had been made clean. Don't let things come into our lives where we have to take drastic action to become clean. We need to apply and look within, the search within, to the Examine ourselves to see if we're of the faith. Because your faith comes by hearing 
and hearing the word of Christ. So examine yourself to see whether you're of the faith. Because it's your faith that will make you well. Your faith will make you well. Will you be the one that will glorify Jesus? See, out of those ten lepers, only one came back to glorify Jesus. And he was a foreigner. Will you give him the glory and the honor and the praise this morning for what he does and continues to do through each and every one? How do we maintain a divine, healthy, fruitful life? It's by staying in the Word of God, keeping ourselves in prayer and communication with God, and being in fellowship with one another. So we praise God. So we, Heavenly Father, thank you, worship team. Father, I really want to thank you that, Lord, we come humbly before the throne of grace. Father, we do not walk up proud and lofty. Father, we come humbly before you and ask, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy, your love to be lavished upon each and every one of us. Father, many of us have fallen short and I'm one of them. I'm the first to put up my hand, Lord. Many of us fall short of the glory of God. And so, Lord, I ask for forgiveness for the thoughts and intents of our heart. I ask for forgiveness for the words that have slipped out of our mouth. I ask for forgiveness for us holding and harboring anything against anyone Lord, I ask that you move within us because you're here, you're in our midst, and you're in us. Father, I thank you that you will break the chains and the yokes of bondage from us today. That no more, Father God, Lord, will Satan as cohorts have us bound, or Father, have us, Father God, Lord, arrested father from this day lord you've come to set us free you've come to deliver us to rescue us and i thank you father god for what you have done through your son our lord jesus christ and father that was all upon the cross who died for you and me and so lord You've took all of our sicknesses, all of our infirmities, all of our diseases. Father, you've taken everything upon yourself so that we might live this fullness of life, to have this abundant life through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. So Lord, we want to glorify your name this morning. We want to magnify your name together because you are worthy of all honor and praise this morning. So, Lord, let us not be like the Pharisee, but, Father God, knowing, Father, who we are, Father, you know all things. Father, nothing escapes under your watchful eye. Father, you know, you see, you hear. So, Lord, I ask that you hear these praises this morning. From a thankful and grateful heart as we worship you now with a pure heart, asking you to come and cleanse us through and through with that refiner's fire this morning. We ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen.